Brian Wilson is a legendary American musician, singer, songwriter, and record producer. He's best known for being the mastermind behind the 1960s rock and roll band, The Beach Boys. While he continues to tour, Wilson's also pushing his other passion, which is breaking barriers about mental illness. Now in his 70s, he's part of a nationwide campaign to bring awareness to mental health issues faced by millions of Americans. Wilson's story is almost as amazing as the music he created. You name it, he faced it. He struggled with childhood trauma, drug abuse, and mental illness. I recently spoke with Brian Wilson about his struggles and about the 2014 biographical film based on his life called Love and Mercy. It stars actor John Cusack, who plays Wilson in the late 80s. I also spoke with the film's screenwriter, Oren Moverman, about the challenge of telling the story of a legend who's lived a long and complicated life. Brian, uh, this is a quote from you. If the sound didn't make any sense, then I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be lost. It's instinct that tells me. I have an instinct for music or a feeling about it, and I'll have my feelings guide my hands. Is music just a part of you, or does it just come over you? Can you describe the process for well, us? Well, it's been moving me for like 53 years, you know? Uh, when I first started learning how to write songs and stuff, yeah. So that instinct was right there, right off the bat? Right, right. Yeah. So, Oren, what I love about the film is you capture that, and in a film, it's a very short period of time to, to convey this, but he's in the studio, or the character playing him, and it really comes through this instinct. How important was that to have that element in the film? It was very important. The movie was going to be about the music. It was going to be about Brian's creative process and how, without really trying to explain it, because there is no explanation, how he went through the process of making music. And so we were lucky that we had the smile sessions and the pet sound sessions to reference and to learn from about his process, and we tried to capture that as a, as a movie. And Brian, when you saw the film for the first time, how important was it to see that part of you on, on the big screen? Well, it was portrayed very, very accurately, very, you know, factual. And they did a good job of portraying the way I used to be. Yeah. Uh, your induction into the Songwriters Hall of Fame, Paul McCartney, Sir Paul McCartney gave the induction speech. He said your music made him cry. There was something so deep in it. It's a sign of great genius to be able to do that with a bunch of words and a bunch of notes. Um, he kind of just gets it down to its ingredients, but there's oh, much McCartney? more. Yeah. He told me that God Only Knows was his favorite song. Yeah, he said he, he's given pet sounds as the 16th birthday gift to his kids. Uh, right. Uh, what is that? How does that make you feel? Very proud. Very, very proud. Yeah. yeah. So, Oren, part of telling this story was capturing Brian as a young man and then older. Uh, how important was it to have two different actors play him and getting those pieces right? No, that was a big debate because, you know, we knew we wanted to tell two stories that add up to one. Uh, and then there's, you know, practical elements of, you know, can an actor pull off these two things? Uh, and Bill Pollard, who produced and directed the film, really felt strongly that it should be two actors, that we can separate these two stories, much like the way you separate, you know, uh, chords and put them together in an interesting new way, uh, kind of following Brian's lead in terms of how he makes the music. So it was sort of a musical approach to take these two things that shouldn't add up and kind of put them together and see how they float. I read somewhere where your first script was about 170 pages and you mm -hmm. said, I don't think I've got enough here, yeah. which is, <laughs> I, most people who don't know anything about scripts would say, that's a long script, uh, you had to whittle it down. Was that tough? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was tough only because it's, you know, Brian's story is so interesting and so full of, of creativity and, uh, and ups and downs and just an incredible story. And I think a big uh, mistake you can make in trying to make a, a musical biopic, as it were, uh, is to tell everything because you get so excited about what you find out and the music is so great. It never stops being great. And there's more and more of it and the influences. So uh, first draft, I kind of went crazy and uh, uh, kept it very long. And Bill Pollard was very, very good and generous and gentle about, okay, Okay, let's, let's work it down to 100% from 150. Was there any trepidation going in and watching it for the first time? Because I think in everybody's life, you have well, moments. When I saw it, the, the part where the Dr. Landy program we had, uh, Paul Giamatti, Di, 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 what is it? Giamatti. Yeah, yeah. Giamatti, uh, he portrayed Dr. Landy very, very accurately. Was that tough to sit through then for you, having lived it? Who wants to live it a second time, I guess? Right. Well, by the th second or third time I saw it, I started to be less afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about your wife, uh, because in this film, I think you, you captured her beautifully in that she's almost this angel who comes in and saves you. Um, how important has she been in your life? 
Well, she's been an inspiration to me, and she gave me a solo career. She, it was her idea to have me do solo concerts, you know. I've been doing it for almost eight, 18 years now. Let's talk about Love and Mercy. What, what do you think, when you were sitting down to put this together and write it, what did you want as the overarching theme in it, do you think? Well, I listened to um, this little piece that, that Brian did talking about Love and Mercy, the song, uh, and how these, these are two profound uh, emotions, and one actually maybe even stronger than the other. And that was sort of a guiding principle for this movie. It was going to be about love. It was going to be about how love saves the day. It was going to be about compassion and, and, and being open to, to getting better and to feeling better and to creating out of a period uh, uh, that is not very creative. And it was going to be a celebration of the music. So everything was kind of encapsulated in that concept of love and mercy. It was really the guiding principle. And it was actually the first thing Bill and I talked about, which is you know the, the film in its various incarnations, the script over the years had different titles. But uh, the first thing we talked about is let's call it love and mercy, because that's, that's the, the place we want to take. Brian, um, you know, if I were to break my arm and come into this room, you might say, well, how'd you break your arm? And you might sign my cast. Uh, we don't have any problems with people who have physical ailments. Right. But mental illness is still so stigmatized. Um, this film, in many respects, helps to open up a dialogue, don't you think? I mean, and was that important for you? Well, the, the dialogue, people that see that can, can identify with me and what I went through and the kind of mental illness I, I suffered from, and they can walk away from the movie feeling a little better, you know? What, what would you be your message if somebody was watching this and they were having struggles with depression or, or other issues in terms of, uh, you know, seeking help or, or that there is a path forward? I mean, what kind of message would you want to deliver? That, well, first of all, not to stay away from drugs is my, would be the one, one advice that I would give people. If to stay away from drugs, don't take drugs. And, and uh, Dr. Landy, in many respects, that comes across in the film, uh, medicated you uh, f f to a huge degree. Uh, obviously, uh, here's a guy who was supposed to help you, damaging you in many respects. Well, he taught me how to exercise and eat, eat healthy foods. This is the one thing he did. Other than that, he medicated me too much. He kept me medicated. And I was under his control for nine years, you know. Oren, uh, capturing him as a character, and I know you watched a lot of interviews with him mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I mean, uh, what was your takeaway about him? And Well, you know, in order to do my job right, which is screenwriting, you, you have to fall in love with the characters. Um, and this one was easy <laughs> because um, it's very easy to fall in love with Brian, with Brian's work, with his story. Um, my takeaway was just that it's a very human story, but it's ultimately a story of triumph uh, because I think in, in Melinda and how she came into his life, how she helped him, how she got him away from Landy is a real lesson of, of what needs to happen around mental illness, which is uh, the, there's a need for love and support and, and a drive to, to make things better. And I think it, it sort of relates to having a family or having a loved one, but it also gets bigger about having a community, having a support system. So all these things were sort of floating through the story in this beautiful way. Self-care is big when it comes to mental illness. So what do you do on a daily basis to, to help well, I take my medication three times a day and uh, for, for uh, depression and for anxiety and for sleep. And I do a lot of exercise, a lot of walking in a park. I take like half hour walks every day. Yeah. And uh, I, I'd heard you say before, you know, voices in your head, that sort of thing. I mean, what you, hallucinations. Yeah, yeah, so what's that like? I mean, what kind of a struggle well, is it's, that? It, the, the, it's not really clear thoughts, just kind of like mumbling in my, you know, it's like not really a clarity thing, just like mumbling. Does it get in the way of, of you sitting down and writing? And, and Sometimes it does, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, how do you work your way around that? Is it just, uh, just keep willpower, just keep going at it? Yeah. 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 Oren, is that kind of an offshoot of this sort of thing, that you, you, you write a screenplay like this, it's your baby, it's out there in the real world, but it can open up a conversation? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, you know, credit to Bill Pollard, because one of the first things he said 
when he was uh, you know, pushing the movie forward was he, he wants this movie to become uh, a conversation piece that has to do with mental illness, that has to do with Brian's struggle and, and other, you know, many struggles many people are experiencing. And so there was always a, a dream to use the movie not only as a piece of entertainment and as a great story and as a great celebration of Brian, but also uh, as a tool to, to open up a dialogue and a conversation, much like the way the campaign to change direction is, is doing it, destigmatize the conversation around mental illness, know that we're all kind of dealing with it in our families and with our loved ones and with people, with people we know about and some people we don't know about but follow uh, and have a conversation that will you know, move society forward in terms of dealing with it. Brian, uh, John Cusack said he, about you, he's incredibly tough, he's not perfect, but he's healthy and happy and he's making music and he survived. Michael Jackson didn't make it, Elvis didn't make it, Brian made it. Um, I know that you like Gershwin uh, quite a bit. What would you want your legacy to be? How would you like people to remember Brian Wilson? Uh, as a good harmony maker, I was, was my first thing. And then of course a melody, melody writer and a songwriter, but mostly the harmonies that I did with the Beach Boys. What music do you listen to today? I listen to 80s music and some 60s, you know, little of everything. Is it good to listen to your own music back every once in a while? Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then. All right. Brian, Aaron, thank you so much, so much for thank you. the interview. Pleasure. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back with a look at another artist whose life's work is breaking barriers. Oh.